is weird, odd, strange, or just plain bizarre is really your cup of tea. Then, the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast will give you that fix. Can't believe it? Well, listen for yourself as we deliver the strangest news you definitely won't find on CNN or Fox. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Weird News Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Weird News Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Heidi, and today I'm joined by the wonderful Stacy. Hello. Today we have some fun weird news stories. I am excited because the first one starts with a moose, and I like moose. Heidi, yeah, absolutely. Yep. yep. I still don't think that should be the plural of moose. It moose sounds very moose. unnatural. Yeah. I reading it, I kept reading the word moose as like either singular and then i'd be like oh so they just mean one moose like that doesn't work there's only one moose in the world there's only one moose and then everything just got thrown off and then i would switch to the plural and i'm like well now that doesn't work when i read the story so it was confusing to me uh, anyway the plural of moose is moose just so you all know our first story takes place at a colorado resort with a moose and this started when a woman, in an effort to uh, warn of the dangers of moose, uh, posted a video on social media of a moose charging skiers and snowboarders at a ski resort. The woman's name was Lauren Drogsvold, and she captured the video at Breckenridge Ski Resort, again in Colorado. The video shows a large bull moose uh, approach and then charge a crowd of people. Uh, apparently, though, there were no reports of injuries. So that's good. See, once before you got to the crowd of people, this sounded like, and I'm pretty sure there is a commercial that deals with the moose, that insurance commercials. <laughs> we, we know a lot because we've seen a lot. I'm pretty oh, sure there yeah. is one. I think it's like charging a swing set or something. Probably. <laughs> but it, it felt like there's a moose. That is, this just feels like a joke. But then you get to crowds of people. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. This was that commercial in real life. <laughs> <laughs> um Apparently, the resort CEO, uh, John Bueller, he made a statement saying that staff tries to prevent guests from approaching the highly territorial moose, which are herbivores. Generally, the moose are peaceful and they can turn aggressive, though, if they feel threatened. And they're herbivores. They're not like going to eat you. Uh, but they're big and they have giant antlers. I feel like you need a sign on the road, like warning moose territory or something. Oh, yeah. Like, do not bother potentially do not feed the animals do not threaten the moose yeah exactly don't approach um also the colorado parks and wildlife spokesman uh his name is mike porus porus yeah uh he said that the agency has jurisdiction over moose and the wildlife officers are the only law enforcement personnel that can decide uh if they want to tranquilize and then move a moose so even though the moose is on that ski resort's land they don't have jurisdiction to just like deal with the moose like tranquilize it and move it or anything they can kind of just try and avoid it because um the colorado parks and wildlife people they're responsible for it but see so... now i'm like visualizing moving a moose and <laughs> since you have the ski resort would you put it in the ski lift like if you as a ski resort actually <laughs> tranquilize it, like okay this moose is too far down the hill we want to get it back up in the woods so we'll tranquilize it and then put it on the ski lift and tie it on and then when it gets to the top like my, my brain went off in a very strange direction. I, I apologize. mean, maybe. Maybe they just like put a bunch of skis underneath it and just kind of push it. Right. You know, like downhill or, or uphill. Or sledding or... Or a snowmobile. Right, yeah. I feel like that might be best. Drag it, put some snowboards underneath it. I don't know. Can you it. train the moose to like, you know, only come when it's called or something? I don't know. I feel like you need like some safety circle. Like if we sprinkle salt around the resort, the moose won't come. <laughs> just plant the plants away where it wants to go eat or something yeah i'm not sure but, but also a moose yeah. is big like, yeah they're huge so i kind of wonder you know what does it feeling threatened because there were a lot of people how did you come to be around all these skiers because I, I know there's probably some like silly teenager who would totally want mm -hmm. to go antagonize mm -hmm. the moose but i feel like for most people it's just like whoa what is that a moose and stay the heck away from me yeah because they're gigantic so i don't know maybe a moose just feels threatened in crowds maybe they just get nervous i'm not sure 
I didn't know that people were there, and then all of a sudden it came upon it. I was yeah. like, people, I don't know what to charge. Yeah, exactly. Just gets nervous around big crowds. I'm not sure, but it felt threatened, and uh, thankfully no one was hurt. So I'm glad to hear. Also, I hope the moose is okay. I hope maybe it just went back into the woods right? or we something. We don't seem to have done anything to it, so I, I know. it wasn't hurt, it, I think. I hope not. That poor moose. Again, it's so big. I feel like if you ran into a moose, you would get hurt. Oh, yeah. Like, not the moose. The moose would just be like, what the heck? Right. Yeah. Be like, what, what, what were you trying to do yeah, there? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> um, but anyway, I hope the moose is doing well. I wish I wish the moose well. And the people, of course, also the people. Yes. And the resort. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone, Everyone well. involved. Um, on to our next story. This is another story where I just hope everyone um ended up okay. But see, this is the one with the silly person doing silly things. Yeah, so I don't feel as bad. Um, this is about a cruise ship passenger who jumped 11 stories off of his cruise ship. And this particular story about this that I read, uh, the man said after the event that he hopes his actions don't inspire others to copy him, which is good. I also hope that. Yes. Please don't. Very much so. Um, so what happened was a man was banned from the Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines after jumping into the ocean from his 11th floor balcony. Uh, the incident took place the week of January 6th. And on that week is when 27-year-old uh, Nick Native of Vancouver, Washington, posted a video on Instagram showing him taking a jump off of his cruise ship balcony. He plummeted 100 feet into shark-infested waters. What are you doing and why? Yeah, that sounds terrifying. Just, this sounds like a disaster film. Like, why are you doing this on purpose? Yeah, I have no idea. Um, amazingly though, he wasn't seriously injured. Although he said he could, in quotes, barely walk for three days afterwards, which sounds like a kind of serious injury. I mean, not like had to go to the hospital, but that's can bad. Barely walk. Yeah. I mean, I think people can definitely die from a fall like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's not good. A hundred feet. Also shark infested waters. Again, disaster film. Why? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm now picturing Speed 2. There wasn't a scene with sharks in that movie, but oh, I'm just God. picturing it. Yeah. I don't know why you would do that. Um... Well, <laughs> the damage was maybe not physical for Nick, but it was financial because then Nick and his friends were kicked off the cruise, which at the time when they were kicked off was in the Bahamas, which was not their final destination. Right. And he then had to pay $200 for a plane to get home. And I'm sure all of his other buddies had to pay for that as well. So financial burden, I would say. Also, the stunt, even though it was only like 10 seconds, it led the cruise line to ban him and, it, and his friends for life. And um, the Royal Caribbean Cruise Line gave a statement. They said, this was stupid and reckless behavior, and he and his companions have been banned from ever sailing with us again. We are exploring legal action. Well, because I feel like it must have been more than 10 seconds. He jumped off his, his 11th story balcony into sharp mm -hmm. infested waters. The cruise clearly wasn't planning for that, and these are shark-infested waters, so it probably didn't have, like, the lower parts open where you can easily get back on the ship. So you got to wonder, did they have to, like, do, like, emergency stop or whatever, passenger overboard? You probably freaked out a number of people who thought you actually fell, yep. not jumped on purpose. Like, yeah, yeah. I also, I mean, I'm sure the 10-second thing was just him jumping it, falling yeah. in. But I'm sure the whole the ordeal aftermath. was way longer because I read the original story I read this on said, like, the headline was passenger jumps and is left behind oh wow because i don't think he was left for that long but i'm sure it took them a while to realize because they weren't right? planning that wasn't their final like stop so they and were if you leaving. were moving then it's like okay we've got to slow down we've got to oh, stop God, we've got to possibly know. turn around or send somebody back like i don't know if they were moving when he jumped but that would be terrifying that would be, yeah that's also super dangerous yeah because the propeller for the boat is huge yes what if oh god that scares me too many so thoughts much. so bad uh, he's lucky even, he was not hurt. Even if you jumped from like the lowest window possible out yes. of this cruise ship, shark infested water. Yeah. Why? And think of how deep he went when he went to the water. That's ugh, into, into It's like territory. even if you weren't physically injured from the fall, you're lucky you didn't get eaten. Yeah, seriously. And that you lasted when he just stayed there waiting for the ship right. to come get him. And that the ship like was able to get him just, you know, at all and in time. I mean, I, I would hope a cruise ship would have an ability to get people who fall overboard. That's true. I would hope so. But just that people who took jump a while. overboard might need a different policy. Yeah, seriously. Um, also, not surprising, um, Nick said that he didn't really think about the risks before taking the jump. And he admitted, quote, nothing was really going through my mind. I'm like, I got to do this. And two seconds later, I jumped and didn't really think it through. Not a surprise. Also, not a surprise, alcohol may have been involved. 
Uh, he said, the previous night we were drinking quite a bit, so I was still feeling the effects of the alcohol. I would say you were still drinking when you jumped. Right? Like, I'm just, I don't think the next the morning before. you should be hungover and jumping 11 stories should probably not be the first thought on your mind. Yeah, I'm going to say you were, mm, I don't know. I think when, you were feeling it. Like maybe they were just drinking into the morning, but then when they stopped, they considered that the end of the night. And so we're like, next morning, even maybe. though it's been like an hour yeah yeah that's possible they were just having lots of mimosas in the morning i don't know uh he said that he hopes uh his stunt does not inspire anyone else to do it because it's dangerous and um he said that i don't think this is a joke i mean i think he did think it was a joke at the time but now he's saying it's not a joke and it was serious uh however the man who recorded nick's jump said that he is disappointed in how royal caribbean handled the incident though he seems to not really get the point of their actions like safety um, this man who filmed it is quoted saying, he's jumped from those kinds of heights before, and we didn't really care about the consequences with the cruise company. He explained, I just wanted to get a video and make it go viral. But the uh... problem is people who would, A, again, I'm sure you probably freaked out a good number of passengers if yep. they happen to see you do that, think they don't know you're doing it on purpose. Yep. B, this is now an inspiration for people who maybe haven't jumped from these heights before. So it's like, yes, let me have the person who doesn't know how to jump 11 stories into shark infested waters go do it. Because mm-hmm. that's not at all a liability. Yep. And now people are like, oh, well, that guy survived, so I can do it. It went viral. I want to go viral, too. Oh, God. Please so don't. Bad. Please don't jump off of cruise ships. Please and, don't And do now it. you can never do a cruise ship ever again. Was that really worth it? I know. And you had to pay extra money. And you got you didn't get a refund. So I don't know, man. I don't know if it's worth it. Just to go viral. I would be. I would hate it if I was like just a friend in this group who didn't even know this was happening, and then he oh, jumped, and then yeah. I get kicked off. I'd be like, I'm not talking to you for right. a month. Like I can never buffet. do a cruise again. Like you made me give up my buffet. Right. It's like I can never do a cruise again, and you all for what? We're not yeah. friends anymore. We're not. We're not speaking at this moment. Yeah, that'd be an awkward plane ride back home. Uh, anyway, we're gonna take a quick break, and then we'll be right back and keep talking about some more weird news stories. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to the Weird News Podcast. We are continuing to share some weird news stories, and this next one is very weird. Funny, but also very weird and concerning. Definitely, uh, definitely concerning. Yes. So what happened is a man was hospitalized after injecting his own semen into his body to treat back pain. I mean, I, I, okay, <laughs> so obviously self-medication is never recommended, but your own semen. Oh, God. That's not even like a prescribed medication no. for anything that I can think of. <laughs> Nothing at all. Um, there was a new study that was published in the Irish Medical Journal, and it recounts this case. It is the case of a 33-year-old man who was hospitalized after repeatedly injecting himself with semen to relieve chronic back pain. Uh, apparently, this is... well. I mean, pretty obviously, I would I would guess this. This is the first reported case of semen injection for the use of medical treatment. And the doctors wrote in the case study, which <laughs> is humorously titled, Seemingly Harmless Back Pain, an Unusual Presentation of a Subcantu- Sub- Subcutaneous? Subcutaneous Abscess. I, I don't know. Let's make yeah. it. Seemingly harmless. Hmm. Well, see, this actually, I feel like it's probably not the first, but it feels like one of those things where you look at it now and think, how are people ever that silly? Like, oh, let me take arsenic to you know, <laughs> stay young or whatever. It's just like, no. Or let me drink gold because that will make me live forever. It's like, no, no. That's true. That's true. It, this, it's like, yeah. this should be like thousands of years old and not you just did this in this century, really? Uh, 
Yeah, that's true. I guess I could see this just like this is the only reported one, right. like recorded case because this guy actually ends up going to the hospital. But ugh, gosh, okay. Yeah. So this is this is dumb. Um, the man's remedy was reportedly discovered when he showed up at a doctor's office complaining of severe back pain. Back pain, and then while examining this patient, a physician noticed the man's right arm appeared to be swollen and inflamed. If that happened, would you keep doing this? Right? And clearly it's not working because you then had to go in because of your back pain. I'm saying, no. Then you still had back pain. Um, The explanation the man gave was one the doctor had never expected. Uh, This is a quote the doctor said, The patient disclosed that he had intravenously injected his own semen as an innovative method to treat back pain. He had devised this cure independent of any medical advice. Yeah, no duh. Ugh. And it's like, okay, not only that, how did you come up with the idea of semen? Like, I have of no all the idea. things to inject yourself, I mean, I guess uh, it's your own body fluid, true. so you're like, hey, Ugh. it's not foreign, but why Ugh. inject yourself with semen? What gave you the, ah, semen cures pain? I, oh, no. God. I don't like even thinking about that. That is so gross on so many levels, because you're self-doing that, you're self-injecting that into your body, and just, it's just mm-hmm. a gross substance anyway to be, ugh, it's... I don't, and this is silly. Okay, um, so what happened is the man reportedly said he purchased a hypodermic needle online and had been injecting himself once a month for the past 18 months. Okay, seriously, if this keeps happening after like, you know, three or four, why do you keep doing it? It's clearly yeah. not working. And his arm was like inflamed. I mean, I swollen. guess it's only once a month. So he's like, oh, I have to wait for another 30 days. Oh. Before. But I'm like, oh. even at that point with once a month, once you get to like, seven or so isn't it clear it's not working god i don't know also apparently um before visiting the doctor the man said he hurt his lower back while lifting a heavy object um according to the study i mean he'd give himself multiple doses and also i don't i this is just silly (sighs) like if you hurt yourself by lifting something like whatever you hurt in your back will not be cured by this type of injection. Like there are Into other your things, arm. right? It's also a common thing to happen to just strain your back. Like you should know that we have like ways to deal with this. I seriously like, want to know what's going on in his mind. Oh, I hurt my back. Ah, uh, let me do semen and three doses, especially. I'm just like, what is the thought process? I feel like that's not. No, I feel like also we had to be thinking about this before the accident. Right. Like, I feel like he's probably planning. Yeah, exactly. I feel like he was probably thinking about this. Just like, you know, considering it. And then this was just an excuse to try it out. Because this can't even be like an old wives cure or anything. No. This had to be. It's definitely not a wives cure. Just pulling this out of nowhere. Yeah. No, this is. If anything, that's a dad's cure. But um, anyway, the. Let's see. The semen reportedly enters the man's blood vessels and muscles an x-ray revealed the air, there was air trapped beneath the man's skin, oh. and he was immediately hospitalized, according to the study, which sounds awful. He's very lucky he didn't die. I know. I know. Doctors treated the man with a intravenous microbial therapy. Antimicrobial. And, thank you. Antimicrobial therapy. And then his back pain reportedly subsided. What do you know? Medicine. Right. <laughs> actual medicine and he discharged himself without having the infected area drained okay see he's not learning anything no i go to the hospital they give me a thing i feel better so let me leave without having the clearly swollen arm dealt with i know because i i know what i'm doing he could still be doing this to this day right he's probably like ah see it just took time for the semen to work oh god oh god i'm like (sighs) or maybe he thinks like now you need like a drug cocktail of semen plus the antimicrobial therapy that sounds terrible Oh, that sounds awful. Also, I just feel like... So you went in, like, found out that you had a real problem. Someone treated it. But then you didn't even let the whole treatment go through. So, like, you like you got cured by things that have been proven by science to help you. Things that have been tested. You know, found out. Actual medical things. Your thing was just out of nowhere. No one had studied it. It had never been done before. But he's like, the problem solved. I've been trying to get rid of this back pain for 18 months, so we're good. God, so bad. So bad. Um, The report the doctors conducted, it was a comprehensive review of medical literature, and they were unable to find any other cases of intravenous semen injection. Thank goodness. Yeah, seriously. Um, The study concluded with a warning that medical experimentation is dangerous 
And it's risky for untrained individuals to inject themselves with substances not intended for intravenous use. Yeah. Yes. Duh. Um, bottom line, don't inject yourself with anything without a doctor's approval, including semen, including anything else from just your anything, own body. Period. Don't. No, no. No. Yeah. Don't do it. Also, with the internet nowadays, you just bought an intravenous needle online. Well, I mean, I can understand why you would need that if, like, you're diabetic or something. True. True. So I can understand why that would be available. And it, he clearly didn't need to buy semen because he used his own. But uh, it's just yeah. the idea to inject yourself with semen. Like, I can't even understand people who can, like, knock their shoulder back into place. When oh, it's been, I'm yeah. Like, I'm, I'm going to the hospital. I, w- I will see you later. Yeah. I, I want a medical professional. And he's just like, I'm injecting. I'm good. Also, thank God he said it was his own. Because that'd be even worse if that wasn't. <laughs> well, see. Again, this feels like a thousand-year-old sort of cure of, like, inject yourself with donkey semen. That yeah. cures anything. Oh, no, it doesn't. True. Don't do that. Please don't. Yeah. And also, I mean... Not that we needed science to prove that this was a bad thing, but at least now we have a written account that it doesn't work. Yes. So hopefully... It's in medical journals. This is not a good idea. Yes, exactly. And every all the scientists agree it's a bad thing to do. So hopefully that doesn't happen again. And well, it might. It just might be that other people they don't, don't report, report it. it. Yeah. Which again, that means probably your arms or whatever you're injecting into is just swollen. See, and I'm wondering if it's his arm is swollen, but it doesn't hurt him. So he's like, oh. hey, so long as I'm not in pain, I'm fine. Because oh. it's like you went in there because your back pain that you've been dealing with for at least 18 months. He went in there for the back pain. He didn't even go in there for the arm. So I'm like, so the arm doesn't bother you? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And I saw a picture of his arm oh. from the swollen and it was really bad. Oh. It was all red and swollen. And then no one else noticed that like 18 months. I mean, you've got to hope it's only been swollen for the past, however. It doesn't seem to have actually been swollen from the semen. It's from the air bubble, I guess. Oh, yeah. But still. Yeah. uh, I mean, that also means you're just not good at injecting yourself with things. Yeah, so please stop. Yeah, you're not a trained medical professional, which I feel like no one should have to tell you. You should just know that you aren't. But then also, I don't know if he could keep working like that. Again, hopefully the problem... He wasn't with that, living with that for 18 months because yes. that would be really sad and concerning. Um, so I hope that he's better and able to go back to work. But dude, you should have had that drained. You should have stayed. That's right? Bad. Like, why would you leave? Because that's clearly you didn't come into the hospital expecting to be hospitalized. No. And you allowed yourself to be hospitalized, at least for the antimicrobial treatment. So why not wait until the doctor says you can go home? Yeah. Since you're letting yourself be treated, period. I mean, yeah, I'm sure he had some reason, like maybe insurance or something, or maybe just like he didn't trust doctors, but uh, you went to a doctor anyway, so you had to have some faith in them. Just don't do it. Just general PSA. Don't Don't inject inject yourself yourself. with like anything that a doctor's not recommending to you. Just don't do it. Even if from, from your own body, it's bad. I mean, there's certain things, you know, like, oh, this is a, you know, good chicken soup recipe for when you're sick. Oh, my grandmother makes, okay, fine. Those home cure recipes. Sure injecting no right no. and with the, the soup from your grandma just eat it don't inject it into right your body. don't injection <laughs> leave that to people who actually know how to do that right seriously not anyone can just inject some yeah you need because he had the air bubble thing and yeah, yeah. okay uh. oh god really gross all right um before i get too grossed out we're gonna take a break and then we'll be right back and keep talking about some more weird news stories This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. Welcome back to the Weird News Podcast. We are continuing to talk about some weird and strange stories. I have finally recovered from our last story that we talked about before the break. I just want to move on quickly so I can as well. (laughs) So we can just stop thinking about it. Yes. Um, This next story is about a police raid, which expected to find one thing and um, sort of just turned up a lot of additional things. Sort of like the gift that keeps on giving. Bonus. (laughs) Yeah, the bonus to charge someone with additional crimes. So what happened is 
police in Anderson, Missouri. They searched two homes. They seized 58 grams of methamphetamines, a gun, a stolen RV, and a stolen horse trailer. The reason the police, like, investigated this, or, like, initially and raided the homes was they were looking for the meth. So they were looking for drugs, and they found additional items. Plus, they also found a dead bald eagle. Just NBD. Totally normal. Totally normal thing to have in your freezer or whatever. That always um, happens on drug raids. Yeah. Gosh. Exactly. Uh, the discovery came after the Ozarks Drug Enforcement Team, uh, the McDonald County Sheriff's Office, and the Anderson Police Department served two search warrants simultaneously to the houses. Uh, okay, the county- so wait. Oh, yeah. before you- With that many different agencies... I'd kind of be disappointed if they only found methamphetamine. Yeah, that's true. You've got all these agencies for two houses and you found 58 grams of drugs. Hooray. Yeah, I know. I mean, maybe they had suspicions of additional materials, which I would assume because it's a lot of people. I mean, the stolen horse trailer really throws me. I'm like, why yeah. do you have that? Yeah, I don't know. Do you have know. a horse also? Or? Right. And then I'm thinking like like a horse. I don't know. Like you could have multiple horses. What, like who are you? Did you steal the horses that you're carrying? Or right? Like where I, are you going? Is it a cover up horse transport? Cover up for your drug transport? I don't know. So many questions. It's very curious. I mean, not to mention, why do you even have a dead bald eagle? I have no idea. It didn't sound like it was like taxidermied either. Well, okay, but so we're gonna mention later that you know you can't have a bald eagle. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you can't get it taxidermied even if you like just found it. Right. And as a reminder, it is our national bird. So you can't just have it. Um, it belongs in the wild. Uh, this discovery, of course, so it came after they did two search warrants. Also, the sheriff, uh, Michael Hall, he said that the dead bald eagle was found in a freezer in one of the homes. And uh, it was then turned over to an agent with the Missouri Department of Conservation. Uh, as Stacy mentioned, it is a federal crime to kill a bald eagle. Also a golden eagle. That's also a federal crime. And uh, the sheriff told news outlets that he believes... Uh, possessing one living or dead is illegal uh he said it is still unknown how the dead eagle came to be in the freezer uh the suspect of the home was not there during the search uh the authorities arrested 65 year old james kivett for uh his outstanding warrants in the county and charges are pending for the items received or recovered from his home so i mean technically even if you just find a dead bald eagle don't take it home just leave it and if it wasn't for the fact that he then has the random stolen horse trailer, I'd be like, maybe he literally just found it. But then you also have another random right, animal like thing. And I'm like, and, yeah. you like strange animal stuff or what's going on here? Yeah. You just, I don't know. They didn't specify it if, if it looked like he had killed the animal. They weren't sure because again, he wasn't home when they did it. So they couldn't just ask him about it. Uh, the charges uh, being sought against the suspect at the residence. Uh, so there are, okay, so let me say that again. There was another person home at the time. So the person they are charging with all these other counts, like the James Kivett, they're charging him for like the drugs, the ATV, etc. There was someone else who was home when the agents went in and raided the place. So there's also charges going against that person who's at the residence as well. Uh, and they didn't mention the other house that they raided, but... I'm sure that person's in trouble too. Well, and I mean, it would probably be hard to top a dead bald, e- bald eagle in your freezer. Be like, yeah. ah, I've got a dead bald eagle. What have you got? Right, exactly. I mean, maybe they have a dead golden eagle. I don't know. Right. They might have been, well, I guess, were all, was the ATV and the horse trailer all the one residence, James Kivitz? I'm not sure. Because it might have been like, well, I've got an ATV. Well, I will see your ATV and raise you. <laughs> it sounds like it was the materials that they rate that they got besides the bald eagle were for like generally combined from both houses. Like mm-hmm. their count was from both. So I this don't sounds know. like it could easily be like two silly friends trying to one up each other. Oh, I stole a horse trailer. I stole an ATV. I stole a dead bald eagle. <laughs> I could see that. My brain's going off with so many. If you stole stories for a this. dead bald eagle, though, I mean, where else would you get? Where are you getting the a dead bald, bald eagle? eagle? Like, why, who, who are you stealing it from and why? You just took it from someone else who had it in their freezer? Right. Like, I don't know. I heard this other guy had it, so I had to have it too. Right, exactly. I just paid him for it. I don't know, man. Why You shouldn't. There are questions like why you have it. I will never have the answer to that, but you just shouldn't. 
just don't don't keep a bald eagle in your freezer or have meth. You probably shouldn't have that either. Right. We're, we're skipping over. <laughs> we're skipping over the meth. More important one here. The meth is bad. The eagle, I mean, that's just an insult to our country. But <laughs> I mean, the meth is bad, but it feels just sort of like, oh, jugs. OK. Right. But dead bald eagle. Hmm, Plus the, the horse trail is just the cherry on top. Why Seriously? do you even have that? Plus a stolen ATV? How did I bet I mean you could probably steal the horse trailer with the ATV? Oh. You had to steal the ATV first. You did. And yeah. again, my question is still why for both also, of those. How would you like in the middle of the night, like you can't quietly sneak away with that? While they're away from the house and That's, yeah, yeah. Created distraction. Or maybe I don't they know. wanted the horse trailer first and were like, How are we gonna get this out of here? Oh hey, I saw that the neighbor has a ATV. Let's take that. Right. We need the horse trailer. We need some meth and a stolen ATV and a bald eagle, and right. then we'll get the trailer. Exactly. There was a plan. There. Yeah. Probably. We're we're just figuring out parts of it. I'm sure yes. there was a whole scheme. <laughs> um. Anyway, be careful. Don't steal a bald eagle. Don't kill a bald eagle. Like, keep steal. it at all. Don't steal. Period. Don't steal. Don't or do mess. Yeah. Yeah. Stay in school. And with that, we're going to end our episode. Thank you all so much for listening, and please tune in to the next Weird News Podcast episode.